something real hard. I mean, wham! It just hit real hard. Flipped right over. So here we are in the uh, Indiana 03 outing, right? Oh yeah. Okay, I got a got a fish. We got to take a look at there, Joe. Tell me how you got that. Ooh. He's got pretty color to it. Nice. How long was that? That come on a 700. 700. How are you working it with wire? No, it's no bow. No bow and a 700. Real, real short. Short line. Yeah. Don't lose them. I was fishing for Busky and the. I caught him. He got in the way. <laughs> he got in the way. All right, you get some muskies today? I got four muskies. All right. What kind of size? Uh, no, no size, though. Je 28 was the biggest. 28, okay. Jeff, you got a few, didn't you? Yeah, I got 125, 122, and one, I don't know, I did, he snapped my leader. He was about, I don't know, between 36 to 44 in there. Ooh, yeah, that was a good one. Okay. Chase and I've been fishing for spoon plugs. Fishing for spoon plugs. Okay. How did you do it today, Bob? One and a half. One and a half. Yeah. Okay. 24 inches and the other one got off four guys in the boat. <laughs> All right. See you later. See you later. Yeah, Jerry's only 39. Yeah, well, he does. He's <laughs> old. <laughs> guy right there, too. Charlie? <laughs> About as tough as they get. Yes, sir, he is. Mm. Hey, so right here, one too long, I'm pointing to you. <laughs> <laughs> one too long ago, by God, now you're a dedicated spoon plugger. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. I mean, it, it is the way to go. There's times to do other things, but when you're a spoon plugger and you go through the motions, you know when it's time to do those other things. It's all part of spoon plugging. Yeah, it's all part of spoon plugging. It doesn't. Spoon plugging doesn't take away from anything that you already know. It complements it. How many muskies you catch today, Mr. Brown? Five. Total? You and your brother? No, he five. caught four or five. Well, you both count. We lost. A couple. Okay. As a team, 10. Yeah, as a team, 10 muskies in one day. A fish of what, 10,000 casts, they used to say? Yeah. Well, one trolling pack. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. One trolling pack. Yeah, one good trolling pass or 10,000 casts. <laughs> Terry O'Malley says you can do it any way you want. How many did this guy catch today? Four or five. How big? 38, I think, was the largest. Mm. They were running small at that. Yeah. They're still fun. Today they'll, yeah, they be, they'll be 32 to 38. Tomorrow you'll you'll hit the big one. You boys know what you that's get like. Get on the ramp, fellas. Tell them when you get on the ramp in the morning, Dan. Three o'clock. <laughs> 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 you don't get on the ramp. Right? That's right. Close. At least you get on the ramp. You don't have a place to park. Yeah. Went in the bait shop. I know the guy in there, and he says you, you caught a big one, didn't you? See? I said, how did you know? He says those people that were six feet away from us asking us all kinds of questions have already been in here. <laughs> so the word's around. You know, that sells baits, man. Everybody comes in here, he says they're knocking them all out there. Oh, to give you guys baits did. To them off. If there's anybody in here, anybody here that's got any kind of fishing question so ever, there's somebody here that can answer it. I don't have a question, but I got a statement. And the northern Indiana spoon pluggers are lucky that we got some good senior leadership that helps us dummies along. <laughs> we all need that help occasionally. Uh, it's, it's been a real yeah, you got that right. Help us. Absolutely. There's a lot, a lot of good clubs out there. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. The northern Illinois boys got a hell of a newsletter. Wally Kalikowski's club has got a pretty good newsletter and some good spoon pluggers in it. We got to we got to keep pressure on them Illinois guys to get out of the, the problem with those guys, they can, they can have, they can have, they can have a couple of Madison chasing. Yes, sir. Yeah, they won't do that. I know they are. I mean, that's their honey hole. Well, I know. They are. <laughs> okay. I got about a half just to shame them. <laughs> yeah, number one. Number wise, yeah. Yeah. yeah.
But I wouldn't want that many spoon pluggers out there. Could you imagine? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. got a I encountered a story about that. I'm a greeter for Meyer. I, I meet thousands of people. A few of them find out that I'm a fisherman, and I find out they're fishing. The other night, a guy come in, he says something about fishing, and I said, oh, he fish? He said, oh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a tournament fisher. He said, well, how's things been going this spring? He said, oh, I've been doing pretty good. But he says, a couple of weeks ago, we had a tournament. He says, I want to tell you about it. I don't know why he told me this story, but he said there was 20 boats that met 40 people, I think in this tournament. Uh, do they usually go two days? I think they do. Sometimes. But he says, uh, we had a pretty bad tournament. In two days, there were three fish caught by 40 people. Oh, my. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I would have thought that would have been discouraging. Mm -hmm. yep. But they they don't have the capability to learn the things that we learn because they don't troll. They don't have the capability to make a fish take like we do with our lure bumping on the bottom and the speed control that we have that they don't have. They're limited to the depth that they can fish as far as creating a faster speed. I mean, how deep can they throw a crankbait out and be effective walking around the bottom? You know? Most of our fish today came from 15 or 16 feet down to 30 feet. Bumping the bottom or very close to it. I mean, how they, there's no way that they can accomplish any of that on the canvas. They have a choice by the rigs that they fish out of. You know, they got a trolling motor that can position them. And all they have is the lures in their tackle box that they can use to control depth and speed. That's why you see a lot of them fishing around docks and boats. You know, they go out and skip a worm up underneath the pier, and they they catch uh, 10 or 12 fish a day, and they get one, three, four pound fish. They're happier than that. You know, they think they've had a wonderful day. They don't know what it's like to get into a school of four and a half to five and three quarter pound fish or a seven pounder throw it in there somewhere. They had no idea what that's like. <clears throat> they might have a day like that in the early part of the season in the pre-spawn, but they're not going to do it in the summer. For the Buck Perry is the man, and he's the teacher and we're the student, always. And we're lucky to have him around. We're lucky that he passed on what he did. He could have sat there with his mouth shut and never said nothing and we'd still be fishing lily pads. And we wouldn't know each other. We wouldn't have damn good ice cream to eat at all the obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Not all of them, but yeah. sometimes we forget. We got a hell of a leader is what we got. Buck is a heck of a man. Yep. Okay, John. Uh, contra trolling. I know when we find a find a, a, a good point, we can shoreline sight it, straight line passes. But contra trolling, like I, just like out today, I, I can take one one lure and cover three lures lure size ranges. You know. Short line, medium line, long line. No, I mean, I'm if I want to keep it in fourteen, if I want a point to come up in fourteen feet. Well, I can be out in 18 and cross to 14 and go up to 12 and go back out to the 18, you know. I'm good at that. But what's a, a, a technique or, I don't want to say technique, but how can I improve the contour trolling when I'm coming up and I, and I want to hit a 12 or a 14 foot contour line instead of, you know, staying out too deep or going up too high, too shallow. It's just, it's just too erratic. The best way to improve that is go around the bar without a lure in the water and figure out where you normally hit your fish and just try and hit that spot. Mm -hmm. 
It might be a point. It might be a finger. It could be a hard spot. It could be something from on it that you know. Yeah. Normally, where you catch your fish on that spot. So find out where that spot is and use shoreline sightings or marker buoys or whatever you have to do to hit that spot. We all do too much contour troll. Yeah. We all do. When we're fishing for the northerns or the muskies, uh, we all contour troll. But there are certain little spots where we always catch our fish. Yeah. I'll guarantee you one thing. Terry O'Malley is good enough at his interpretation. He doesn't troll all the way around the bar. No. He goes up there and he's got his line sight and he puts a lure in the water and he says, okay, let out so much line, we're going to hit this spot at 19 feet. He makes one trolling pass. Bang, he hits that spot. They're not here, let's move. Yeah. He's yeah. got it that down path. Yeah. He doesn't fish. If, if he was fishing for the northerns and the muskies, he'd do the same thing that we do. Contour troll the weed line or contour troll all the brake lines and stack his lures all the way down and never stop trolling. But for the bass, he wants to hit a spot. Yeah. And, but that's the way it normally is. If you want the bass, you, get, you have to be able to interpret where you normally hit them or where the contact point is and be able to make a pass and hit that spot at a certain depth. As far as getting better at contour trolling and keeping your lure in position when you're contour trolling, the more you fish a spot, the better you learn it, the better you know all the little turns, and the better you get at it. Yeah, I could see that, uh, I mean, if you're going along, if say, you know, some of, these, some of the points really come up, so you're going to have to hold out. If you want to hit it at 12 feet, you might have to stay out in 20 feet. I guess you just have to remember that, you know. So, oh, I gotta stay out here, or else it's gonna, you know, they're gonna come up and. Well, if you got a spot right here that you want to hit, yeah, and it's a bar like this, all you gotta do is go like that and hit it. Yeah. I mean, it's no big deal. Yeah. But if you're contour trolling, moving in and out and in and out, yep. it's no big deal really. If you get your lure on, on it, off it, on it, on, off of it, back and forth, you'll do fine. Yeah. You know, you're bumping it, you're checking that, and you're running running free, you're checking that. Yeah. And that's why Buck says some to move on and off, yeah. on and off. Because yeah. sometimes they want it bumping, sometimes they want it running free. Yeah. Normally the bass will take it bumping rather than running free, but sometimes you catch them running free. Oh, yeah, sure. If you can walk, walk it. Yeah. If you can't, get as close as you can to it. Practice makes perfect, that day. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing, yeah. More time on the water. Yep. If you got something that sharp, though, look like a pig. Why you just be best to make your straight line pass off the end of it, and then just turn back around and come up to it. You know, it runs that way. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter how you make your passes as long as you cover it, you know? If you have to make six passes to cover it, do it. Well, I'm just saying, if that was we'll a little bit more bar it up, yeah. that'd be a good way to do it. That sure. Hit both sides and yeah. on the tip. Yeah. yeah. You could put a marker on the tip. You could put a marker slightly back here and one slightly yeah, back here. Both, now you have a path for this direction, this direction, this direction, this direction, and across the tip. Six passes. You got it covered. Only when I have a situation where I don't have any weeds. Yeah. And then you're fine. I should have won. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you go to make a final pass and you get out here walking in 30 feet of water and the bottom's so mucky and crappy, oh, yeah. you pick up stuff on your spoon plug before you ever yeah. get up to the oh, yeah. to the hard stuff. Yeah. So in that right. situation, you have to figure out about where it starts getting hard at and come out here and run free until you get until you hit that. Yeah. You don't want to get yeah. it walking clear out here where the bottom's all crappy. Yeah. A lot of lakes you don't have to worry about it's hard all the way down, but mm -hmm. in a lot of lakes, the natural oh, lakes, yeah. you can't go out way deep and start clear out there because it won't walk all the way. It'll yeah. be foul before it gets there. Yeah, it's only hard so far down. There. Yep. You know, like you say, I mean, you know, if you use the lures and you know that. Yep. Just like out west, you got spark, spots that can really, really bang the bottom. Oh, yeah. 
But when you get around that corner. That's right. That's when you got to run free. And you got to stop. Bring your line or something. Yep. We well, just reel in a little bit more line. Yeah. And run free. That's yeah. all you can do. You can't walk some of that stuff no. down there. You can't. You almost, we were watching them the other day, and uh, you almost feel sorry for them because there's, like you say, there's so many of them. Yeah. And they kind of keep, it's a good thing, take a kit fishing. But they keep passing this information down, and it's really not the right stuff, you know. But you and, can't uh, tell them. Well, no, you can't tell them that. You know? But, uh, you know, you can go out, you could, you could. Load up on bass, a guy in a bass boat, and say, where'd you catch him, Rick? You could tell him, you could go put a marker on there. Yep. Wouldn't do him much good. Yep. You could tell there's a little point over there that they don't know. They can't interpret it. They just buzz across the best spot in the whole lake. Yep. There's some guys that can figure out where, where Yeah. It is. I mean, there are some sharp guys. Oh, I'm sure guys. there are, yeah. And those are the guys that win the, that win the tournament. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Anybody else? Dan? Oh, hey, Sean. <laughs> At 3 o'clock, if you go to Webster Lake, that's the time you got to get there. <laughs> uh, yeah. in the morning, 3 o'clock on the... That's what Dan says, and he fishes on the weekends, and he knows what time you got to get there to get your boat, to get a parking spot on the ramp on Webster. Oh, no. Oh, especially, yeah, morning, especially yeah. We knew that about four years ago. We come over here and say, if we go on the weekend, we got to leave it. Like two can't catch out of Webster. Well, I see you got this. Yeah. I say in the last, you know, last three days, days probably, probably, you got I said it was 40 or 50, but shit, Mike and Doug. Caught 20 themselves. These guys caught another 10 today. That's 30. That's 30. I'm between three guys. There's four. So I'll bet you there's 70, 80 muskies caught in the last three days. I'll bet you it's probably pretty good. Everybody caught muskies. Might not be a big one, they all caught them. They're all muskies. That's really something. One light is not a very big light. Right. How many did you catch this week, Jerry? He caught six this week himself. The first ones he ever caught. Eight. The first ones he ever caught. And they say the muskies are a fish of the mouth. Just remember, fellas. And one trolling bag. John? Put that right there. John? Hmm? Mike said Doug has one of them, and he uses Buck's regular wire and makes them. I don't know what pound test. Let's go like that. 12 or 7. Put your thumb there like that. Okay. Put that through. That, like th down in there? Push this down. Okay. That, push that down. Shit, my fish wouldn't bite that. It looks so commercial. All the way down? <laughs> All the yeah. way down, okay. Right. So what are you just, doing with the lever? Just holding it down? You don't even have to, really. Just pull on that okay. and turn the handle. And you just keep going until it? Until it's done. That's it. It's done. Let's see what it looks like. Now, if you don't pull, if you don't pull on that, it won't. Especially on the single wire, it won't be tight. Holy smokes! That looks like a professional. You don't have to crimp something. On Where do you get those, Jeff? Netcraft. Netcraft. Make that for about thirty cents. I'll be right back. <laughs> All right. <laughs> One pound test wires. I don't know. Let's see. What does it say right here? Thirty. <laughs> Which one's braided? It looks better than one you can buy at the store. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> that right daddy, there, 90 pounds. My pound. daddy does it. I don't want to get that in the house. That's what I was saying. <laughs> yes, sir. I want it to be flexible. This here, that's ideal. That's why I use Buck's wire, man. It's flexible. It's mosquitoes. Well, that there is pretty strong. That there, and that's where your wire leaders come from. Right? Oh, right. oh yes. like that. Yes, sir. Right. I, had, I had that big mishap of mine. You will. I, I use them a lot. You will. Every one. I had that mishap. Yeah. I got, I got big balls. Yeah. Yeah. Hanging in my garage. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I hate to even see that. Let me get one. I got big balls. Is this, is this Bucks wire? Yeah. 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 Y
Oh, yeah. I give them away every day. Every now and then you get one back. Now that'll pull different. Oh, we've done, done that. Yeah, every now and then you get somebody else's. <laughs> oh, we got our own back before. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you get that too? So we do it good. It's a good feeling to get snagged on something and getting your little bag. Yeah. yeah, we lost about 11 for you. And get it back. Undo it like when you're trolling wire and the thing breaks off. See, it's your rod tip, but you're real. Flip that marker out right away. I wish I put my mosquitoes in my mosquito spray before I came. 20 feet, Ouch. you drop your anchor and you no, make a cast out of the heaviest wind spoon, you got to drag it on the bottom. You catch it. <laughs> I got rods back that way. I do. There ain't nothing wrong with that. That well, looks pretty good. They said, uh, take one of them metal fish stringers and do that. You need to make, make, make a little lot of her out there. That's an inch and a half. That's an inch and a half Is that 20 pounds, John? Yeah. Do a two inch one. I like to have a little more. Yeah. You won't break that. That's an inch and a half wrapped around. That's a that's a net craft. Yes. Made a net craft. Uh, their own. Uh, yeah. Nine or ten bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Itchy. What? Maybe mosquitoes. Yeah, they're bad. Aren't oh, they? they make a nice wrap. Oh man. Sell them. You can do a lot of things with that. Uh, oh, you, you see the spinners, like man? Yeah, yeah. Over there yeah not spinning pluggers. Use them for a lot of things, you know. <laughs> 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 but John, he's getting with it now. Look at that. He ain't messing around. Oh, look at that. <laughs> uh, make him up a batch for the rest of the no. year. <laughs> you can't pull it. I'm telling you, the, the, like the lighter, the lighter no. stuff will, will break it. I found that with the I tried doing 17, so you got to kind of be, be careful. Doug's is a little different. I don't think he's got that old slot that you stick with. Boy, did that wrap on the old tight. Craft well, how come the other end works so well? What, what you got going there? <laughs> Stop that, Jay. <laughs> hey, you're doing all right. That looks good. Got your hand all white there. Jonathan, a bugger maker. You want some fish? Hungry. This might be lemonade or something. But... 500. Said your motor was the bottom. They call him a two feet away. That's all. Waking him up with their motor. That's how they go. Yeah, yeah. What he told me last night. That's all. Like six feet. Our lower unit was hitting the nail. He said, and uh, the wipers was in or whatever they were was in two feet. And if I got into ten, I was home. I was hung on all the damn moss. But if I stayed out of there, so I run a lot of 16, 14, 12, and as soon as I hit 12, I was going back out again, trying to stay out of it. So. There was a slot, and I would come down and into the slot, and it would start coming up. And as soon as I see it started coming up, I turned the boat hard and went right back off the slot. Get on the frog, right? Huh? And get on the frog. Yeah. And now I stayed off the prop, but anyhow, when I took and changed the direction on it, that's when he hit. Is that okay, why you're so using the short line, Joe, to get in and out of there? Well, I was just running it to see how what was going to do, what was going to happen with it, though. That was a good speed? idea, but I, it wasn't my idea. How, how was your speed, Joe? Pretty quick? On that one, it was. Coming out, it was quick, yeah. yeah you bet. Com coming in, I was nice and steady, so he had to be following. But when I made that turn to get the hell out of that that slot, that in, those inside turns are really tough. That's the way you run inside turn. And <laughs> get your boat right up there, buddy, in the weeds and turn that thing and make the throttle turn the boat. Yeah. <laughs> and if there's one there, he, he had no choice but eat it. He, he did. He ate the whole damn thing. <laughs> he did good. Yeah, and that's that same spot worked three days for me. Yeah. That's that same area. If I was a musky yeah. fisherman and I fished the tournament, 
and I got on that spot, and ain't nobody else ever get on, because I never leave it. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, we pretty well did that, didn't we, Clay? We stayed there all day. Yes, sir. We were there three different times. Yeah, we were there three different times. The we best point in Antelope. You didn't tell them how you kept your, your lure in control and make sure I was always in the weeds. <laughs> 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 see, 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 that's you got that's, a, good that's what he's doing. Yeah, he runs a boat. <laughs> yeah. Ron and I fish. If he starts catching them, then that, that goes away real quick. Cool, huh? True story. Well, we, lost, <laughs> we lost more than we landed today. Clay lost four and I lost two others. But they weren't taking real good earlier in the day. And I think what they were doing is bumping us. Because we feel that Clay had one on and it was on for a minute and it got off. He had another one he had to come right to the boat before it spit the plug. So they weren't really taking real good. So you had to really entice them to hit, hit, hit good on the thing. Now, yesterday I got six of them, same area, and that one was at 38 and a quarter. And that was the same thing there, coming down through there, making the turn, only there was another bar just down from there a little ways, and that's where I hit that. And then the day before that, I hit that big bass on the same thing. So that same structure, that, that 19 inch bass was on. So they're all on that same stu structure, up in a corner, way in the corner on that uh, Webster. But, uh, but a lot of, I saw a lot of guys catching a lot of fish on Webster. How many guys caught muskies this week on Webster? Raise your hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and half of them is not here. I'd say it was an yeah. average of 30 a day, the school pluggers caught. Yeah. <coughs> That's how many muskies are in there. Ah. Loaded, fellas. Clay and I, I saw a real sight today. Okay? We seen this guy, he's, he's casting a weed. <coughs> well, there was three of them casting a weed there. Okay? And he's got a, one of them big swim whizzes. And he had a pair of red bloomers on the back that went out about that far. <laughs> the whole damn rig was, when he cast it, it was that damn long. But on the, on the rear hook, he hooked Was this, it a this, female lure? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he, had, he had red, and his kid had chartreuse on, on, the, on the back of the damn thing, and they're casting this thing up in the weeds. I mean, it had to be every bit of that long. Wow. That you guys should have went up. Did you catch anything? Show him your 250s and your 200s and said, this is what we've been tearing them up. Yeah. <laughs> Did you catch one? Oh, we didn't see them, but we've, got, we've seen them all day long. They were going all over testing and everything. <laughs> Unreal. Okay, who's next? <laughs> uh, we got on the lake about 5.30, and I had to work today. And did a lap on my favorite hole. It was uh, 250s. Put on 200, went about a half a lap, I guess. This is one area we do pretty well. And he caught a, my son-in-law caught a 36. His first, his first one? Yeah, yeah, we just, he hasn't been fishing too long. And, uh, and then a little while later I caught one a little over 30. And right. we had another hit, and then we got off the right before dark. Yeah. <coughs> the brown boys aren't in yet, so. No, no, they're, they're, not, they're, they're not in yet. <coughs> Is the ice cream in? Oh yeah, it's in, but they're not in yet. <laughs> sir, but why do you think they're not in yet? You so find <laughs> you'll find out when they get in. Yeah. They stopped at the bar. I think they got lost. Oh, yeah, they were lost. <laughs> Paul and one of the musky guys were out there, and he, we caught ten fish that day, didn't we, Danny? Yep. And the guide had a guy out there, and evidently they were casting the big lures and stuff. They weren't trolling; they were casting. Did they have bloomers on? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> they watched us catch fish after fish after fish, and then he got a 17-pounder off of one spot, and when we went to make our next pass, this guy came up and sat right there. So we made a pass as close as we could to him, and we turned around to make another pass, and he dropped an anchor right on that spot. Wow. So we just went somewhere else, and when he left, we went back and caught some more. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a fabulous way. In the fall, fellas, they get they get on a deep break line. Uh, they don't necessarily hit the 10 and 12 foot no more. You catch them 14, a few at 14. The later in the year it gets, you better get to the 22, to 28, to 32. Because that's where they're at, ain't they, John? Yep. John had one on that 32. John? 28. 28? 
Uh, he added up the boat and it said it was 30 pounds, 30 pounds plus. Ooh. Big, big fish. Yeah. Last one. He was, you he notice was a lot of muskies caught this week, but no real monsters. <coughs> right? oh. Yeah. Oh, they're oh, just they're the, just down there. Except for the pleasure boater that said, "Oh yeah, they got a biting their time." But you wait till today. fall comes. That's a pleasure boater. And it makes oh, everything oh, neutral, yeah. boys, and you can catch them down. Well, let's get a fall or spring. You see, all the huge ones caught in March and April by bat, by people casting for bass. Yeah, well, they're up to spawn in yeah. spring. Yeah. Yeah. But fall is an awful, awful good time. The only yeah. problem with fall is you might have to the fish a little deep. Yeah. Well, <laughs> And, 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 you know, they say, well, they're heaviest in the spring, but I don't believe that because they, they, they don't eat much in the winter. Yeah. Right. They're, uh, yeah. they got to be heavier in the fall, yeah, and I believe fall. that because they ate all summer. Uh, Those muskies that oh, you guys sure. are catching, buddy, they probably got to eat at least thing. once a day, and they probably got to eat a lot. 80, water temperature is 80, 82 degrees, you know? Well, they had a whole growing season then. Yeah. You bet. They probably, uh, some of them small muskies probably keen, I don't know, maybe six inches a foot yeah. in the summer like this. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, three years, and uh, I think they're legal in three years in this area, wow. pretty close. Of course, they stock them, you know, yeah. 12 to 16 inches. Yeah. And if walking is blue plug when you're fishing with brake lines. Yes, sir. If you can walk it, buddy, you will catch a ton more. Uh, the, the, when the fish are shallow, they'll take a free running. If you put enough speed and you put it there, you know, they're, when they're shallow, they're active. But when they're on the deep brake lines, if you if you can bump that brake line, you better bump it. Because most of the fish we catch in the fall is bumping. Ain't they, John? Yep. Mm -hmm. Most of them. You can run free and never catch a fish. Yeah, hardly ever catch a fish. You bump and you can catch it. That thing down there ticking the bottom and they'll gobble her up. Yep. Makes a difference, boys, on the deep brake lines. Yeah, makes a difference. Even a largemouth, I don't care what you do, even a big largemouth in the fall, and they're on the deep brake lines. If you can't bump it, you better be about that far, or you ain't going to catch it. Buck says, on or near. A lot of lakes up here, you got to be just near. You can't be, you can't get on because they're dirty or they have moss uh, or weeds. Yeah. But if you can get near and keep that lure near, when they get active, you can take them. We've got some good fishing coming in the fall. Don't don't put your boats away October and November. The, the better, the, the later it gets, the, the closer it gets to ice up, the better it gets. For the large miles, about two days before the ice comes on. That's the best. Ain't it, John? Are you talking deep down to? Yep. Danny, you talking really deep then? Yeah, I'm talking deep. Yeah. In the fall, I don't. I, I shouldn't say this. I, I won't say this if you shall. I haven't experienced very much of that. Oh, great. Hey, Brown Brothers, get over here. 